Hi guys, this is Brandon Miller, and um, this is going to be my first Adobe Flash based Air tutorial. And um, just as a, a little prerequisite here, when you watch my Air tutorials, you should basically know what you're doing in uh, ActionScript 3 already. Um, but what I'm going to do here is this is just a real basic custom Chrome Air app, and um, I'm going to show you how to use the minimize, the maximize, and the close button. Now this maximize button, as you guys are pretty familiar with, I don't know if you think about it all the time, but when you maximize something, you need to have it also restore it back down to the original size. Um, so this is just going to be a real basic coverage of all of those things. The very first thing is how to get this right here to be my Chrome. So over here on the right hand side, I'm going to go to my air settings and I'm going to set right here the window style. I'm going to set that to custom chrome. You can see I already have it. The, the default though is system chrome. So what you do is you go to your air settings and then you come back over here and set your window style to custom chrome transparent. One thing to keep in mind for custom chrome transparent, if you're programming your own browser, um, you will not be able to display flash in the current version of air with a transparent. You either need to use a uh, custom chrome opaque or a system chrome. Um, custom chrome transparent will not let you display flash inside of another website when you're using it in a browser style format. Um, and that's all you have to do to set your custom Chrome. The next thing we're going to do is um, I'm going to let you see what this looks like now here as a custom Chrome. And there you go. There's no Chrome on the outside of it at all. Um, but you notice when I click on the top Chrome here how it moves it around. Then also when I hit the minimize button, bam, it's minimized. Next thing, if I hit the maximize button, it maximizes to my screen. Um, then when I hit this button again, now you could have that change the shape or something like that, but that's later on down the road. This is just a real basic. Hit that button again, now it's back down to the same size as it was originally. Next thing is a close button. All very simple, all very necessary for having a good program. Um, so you can see my layout here. What I've got is I have a button here named minimize butt, as you can see. Then I have another button named maximize butt and I have a button named close button. Now this top chrome here, I have labeled it top chrome. Um, the rest of it is just there for some skinning. Now we go into the actions panel. This is where it gets different from what most people are used to with flash. Um, you can program it the same way as you do with flash, but really if you're into air, you should be doing some, some pretty streamlined code. The fewer lines, the less processor speed that you are going to need. Um, so what I'm doing here at the top is I'm going to set all of my variables right here. What I'm doing is I'm setting button click. That's going to be a method object. I'm not exactly sure if that's the right name, but that's what I'm going to call them from now on, method objects. And I'm going to assign this function to it. Add event listener, mouse event dot click with a button clicked. When I assign that to this, any place that I call that, it's going to run this add event listener function. Um, so every time I click a button, it's going to go to this function here, button clicked. Same thing goes for button down. I'm going to do the same thing with the add event listener, but for a mouse down here. And when the mouse is down, it's going to be button pressed is the function I'm going to call. The very next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set a variable called window. It's also an object to be a stage.native window. And what that refers to is that refers to your program right here. This is the native window the window which your program resides in. So then we get into some of the basic stuff here. Um, I want to turn all of my buttons because they're just graphics. They don't have any button properties. You want it to turn to the pointer when it goes over top of them. So I'm going to set the button mode for all of my buttons here to be true. And a lot of you guys, I haven't seen this on uh, most of the FLAs that I've tried to help people with, but if they're all the same thing and they're all the same type of object, just make them equal to each other. Close button mode equals maximize button mode equals the minimize button mode, which equals true. Then you set them all on one line because they're all the equal to the same thing, true. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the button down function, this right here, this add event listener mouse down to my top Chrome. And I'm going to do the same thing instead with the button click to both all three of the minimize button, the maximize button, and the close button. So whenever these things are called, the button down or the button click, it's going to run button clicked or button pressed functions. 
we can take a look at first the button pressed function. That is when you click on the top chrome and you don't release it. It's basically a drag when your mouse is down and you do something with it. So you have to pass the event to the button pressed, obviously. It's not returning anything, so I'm going to leave that as void. This is telling, de declaring what type of return you're going to give. And then I'm going to assign the target of the event, the e.target here, to be equal to button. So if I had assigned this button down to several different buttons, what this would allow me to do is it would allow me to grab the instance of which button I'm clicking on. Um, and then here's where I parse out which button I'm doing and tell it what to do based on the, the name of the instance. I'm going to do a switch statement. It's basically the same as an if statement, only it's only going to run a uh, comparison against this value right here, button.name. Um, so in this instance, if button name is top chrome, then I'm going to do window.startMove, and that's going to allow your dragging. So I'm clicking. It's running through the switch statement right now. If the mouse is down on top chrome, drag it. If not, don't. Okay, I just let go. Alright, so now we're going to go back here, and that's it. That's the end of this function. Very simple to start your drag. The next function is button clicked. Again, we pass the event, and we do the same thing here. Variable button equals e.target. Same thing here, and in this case, we're actually using it because I have one, two, three buttons that I'm sending to the same function with the same event listener. So I set up the switch statement, the button name, that's what I'm testing for here. The switch tells you what you're testing for, and the case is if it equals, if what you're testing for equals this, then you run what's in here. So my case, if it equals minimize button, if button name equals minimize button, I'm going to window.minimize. And remember that window right there, that is stage.native window up here. All right, now, if you do have multiple cases here, like you can see, we have all three buttons, and you're running a switch and a case, you need to break. What's going to happen is if you break the case, if it equals minimize button, I'm going to minimize the window, and then I'm going to exit this function. I'm going to exit this switch, actually. So at any point where I have a true value, button.name equals the val variable in the case, I'm going to exit it when I hit break. That way it doesn't, it doesn't test, it doesn't continue on, it doesn't take up more memory, and you have no chance of having a duplicate error. So this break statement is very important. You put it at the end of every case. Same thing here for maximize. If the button name equals the maximize button, then I'm going to run through a couple of tests. The first test I'm going to run through is window.display state. What that does is it tells me, am I in a normal display state or am I in a maximize display state? It'll also tell you if you're in a minimize display state. But for me, if I'm in a normal display state, then I'm going to maximize my window. Okay? If I'm not in a, if I'm not if I'm not normal, I don't want to maximize because it's probably already maximized. So I'm gonna run my else. If I'm not normal, then I'm going to do a window.restore. Okay, right now the display state, the native window display state, is normal. I hit the maximize button. It's just run through my if statement and said, hey, I'm in normal. Okay, now I'm going to maximize. Now the display state is set to maximized. So if I click this button, it runs through that same switch statement and tests for the if, and it says, hey, I'm not in a normal state, so I'm just going to restore. Then I'm going to break that statement. So this is my maximize statement right here. Now my third case is going to be a close but case. If the button name is close but, then I'm just going to close the window, window.close. And that's basically all there is to it. So click on the video, you can assign event listeners along with the function that you call to, I'm calling the object missing variable. The next thing is I assign my window variable, which is stage.native window. The next thing that you guys might have new to you is if the variable is the same type of variable and it's the same answer from multiple instances, you can assign them to each other and at the end assign the same thing. Close button.net.node equals some other.node, which equals some other.node, and they all always be true. The next time the switch case here, remember that switch all it does is it tests for one specific variable. And if that variable equals this right here, then execute the code that's in here.